Please welcome to the stage Dawn Hatch and Dane Smith. Education service. We used to work with children. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, today we're looking at rights and representation through history of Parliament, our right to vote. And we're hopefully looking for some audience participation here as well. Yeah. Cool. So, we're going to start off with a warm up activity to get you guys in the mood. We are teachers, so we have notes. Okay? <laughs> Bear with us. So first of all, we're going to give you four significant dates in British democratic history. Hold on to your hats, it's going to be amazing. So for each date, we would like you to consider your individual profile at present, okay? So we'd like you to consider your age, your gender, are you married, and your financial income per year. So for me, as an example, I'm 29 years of age. I am a male, believe it or not. I am not married, and I earn a year. Okay, so for each date, we would like you to stand up if you feel on that date you would have been able to vote according to your profile. Do you fit the voting eligibility criteria? So to start with, as an example, we'll have 2015. Please stand up if you feel you can vote in 2015. <laughs> Amazing. That's for you at the back. That. That's very good. Yeah, for you at the, the back, just vote. bob up and down. Fine. <laughs> okay, so anyone over the age of 18 can vote. It doesn't matter about your gender, your financial income, or whether you're married or not. Take a seat. Okay, so we've got the rules. Here we've got the first date, guys. 1832. Stand up if you think, you believe you could vote in 1832. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a few people. A few people. Very good. So basically... Oh, we can sit down now. That's okay. Um, no, no, let them stand up because oh, I yes. want to find out oh, about that. Sorry, sorry. Stand up, stand up. Um, <laughs> So basically, you could vote in 1832 if you were a leaseholder of a, of a sort of a amount of £10 a year. So basically, if you owned a property in London over half a million, you could vote. No, I'm single. No, well. no wealthy boys for me. Okay. So basically, five adults in every 100 could vote in 1832. Next date. All right, we have 1918. It's like bingo. 1918. <laughs> Stand up if you feel you could vote in 1918. Ooh. Quite a few more people there. Okay, okay. I think the women are getting on on this, aren't they? <laughs> right, so this is known as the Representation of the People Act, the Fourth Reform Act. All males over 21 could vote. Women if you are over 30 and married, you can vote. So stand up if you're over 30 and married. Oh. Well done to you. Sorry, ladies. All right. <laughs> Finance is discarded. It doesn't matter how much you earn. Take a seat. Okay, the next date, 1928. If you feel you could vote in 1928, please stand up. <laughs> okay. Right, so in 1928... If you're male and female and over the t age of 21, so it's the same vote in age for men and women in 1928, you could vote. Anyone over the age of 21, woo! Hey! Take a seat. And the final one. 1969, insert your sexual pun here. 1969. <laughs> Stand up if you could vote in 1969. Fantastic. This is the Representation of the People Act Amendment. The voting age was reduced to 18 for men and women. Gender, financial income, marriage discarded. Take a seat. Warm-up activity over. <laughs> Just do it and answer. 
Okay, so the next part is more participation, guys. Yeah, <laughs> we like participation. So basically, it's a quiz chronologically looking at people's rights representation, A, B, C options on this one. So we're going to ask you to raise your hand when you think you heard the correct answer for each question. Simple as that, okay? All right, so guys, question one. I'll repeat the question. I am a teacher. <laughs> Who had the most power in the making of laws between 1215 and 1689? We have A, the monarch, B, the King's Council, or C, the House of Commons. I shall repeat. Who had the most power in the making of laws between 1215 and 1689? Hand up if you think it was A, the monarch, B, the King's Council, or C, the House of Commons. Shame on you, it's the monarch. The monarch, <laughs> boys and girls. All right, a bit of tidbit for you. The Great Council and then Parliament could advise the monarch, but the monarch did not have to accept their suggestions. In 1688, after concerns about King James, its disregard for parliamentary rights and his pro-Catholic stance, Parliament invited William and Mary to the throne. William and Mary accepted the declarations of rights, upholding Parliament's sovereignty and promised to rule according to Parliament's laws. Okay. <laughs> Yay, democracy. Okay, uh, the second question uh, is which of, uh, which of these were elected in Simon de Montfort's Parliament in the 13th century? So which of these were elected in Simon de Montfort's Parliament in the 13th century? Is it A, women? B, Lords, Barons, or C, Knights and Burgesses. Put your hand up if you think it's A. Put your hand up if you think it's B. Put your hand up if you think it's C. Well, that's lots of hands there. And the answer is C. Well done, top Yay! marks to you guys. Knights and Burgesses. So in January 1265, Simon de Montfort, a powerful baron, fought to extend representation beyond just the rich and powerful by inviting elected citizens, so burgesses as well as knights, from towns and boroughs uh, to join the decision-making process. So basically this set the president for the now House of Commons. And basically we're celebrating this year 750 years of Sir Simon de Montfort's Parliament. So yay, Woo! happy birthday! <laughs> okay. All right, gender bender question now. <laughs> when did women sit for the first time in the House of Lords? A, 1832, B, 1918, or C, 1958? I shall repeat. When did women sit for the first time in the House of Lords? A, 1832, B, 1918, C, 1958? A, raise your hands. B, raise your hands. C, raise your hands. Well. Um, it is 1958. The Life Peerage Act in 1958 finally allowed women to sit in the upper house of the Life Peers. Baroness Mouton was one of the first women to sit in the Lords. She was a socialist and criminologist. Don't know why I'm telling you that. The first female to take her seat in the Commons was Nancy Viscountess Astroy in 1919. Have any of you been to Parliament? Yeah. Due to women in Parliament being only really present in the last 100 years, there were no facilities, i.e. toilets, provided in Parliament. This, of course, was rectified when we saw female members in both hazes. Go, Equality. <laughs> OK, next question. What year was secret voting introduced? Was it A, 1794? B, 1872, or C, 1905? So go again. So if you think it's A, 1794, put your hands up, please. If you think it's B, 1872, put your hands up. If you think it's C, 1905, put your hands up. And I can tell you the answer is B, 1872. Yay! You know your history, guys. Well done. So, the 1872 Ballot Act allowed people to vote in secret first time before you could vote. You actually voted it open, and people would obviously intimidate you to vote a particular way. So, if you um, were um, a tenant of a landlord, or obviously, you know, your employer can actually persuade you to vote a certain way, or you may lose your home or job. So, it was very serious. So. Basically, without the 1872 um, Act, really, there was no democracy because you still, even though you could vote, you'd be swayed by various people. So, there you go. <laughs> All right, so guys, because me and Dawn are very, very lazy, we have produced a video for you to watch. It's only 70 <laughs> seconds. It does all the work for us, OK? So enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We've not finished yet. Hold on. It's just a video. Baron, lay down the law with King John. 
1258, Simon de Montfort's great council and the provisions of Oxford gave a small group of commoners a wider hand in governing the realm. Like father, like son, Henry tried to back out of the agreement, prompting a civil war. De Montfort won, and at his 1265 parliament, called representatives from towns and cities together, another first. Then the model parliament of 1295 gave boroughs and shires two representatives each. 1430, and the vote was given to freeholders of land worth 40 shillings or more. And the Putney debates of 1647 saw the levellers argue for voting rights for all. It was nearly 200 years before the Great Reform Act of 1832 swept away rotten boroughs, extending the vote to the new industrial cities. Reforms followed reforms, followed reforms, and the electorate grew. <laughs> And in 1918, universal suffrage was finally achieved for men over 21 and women over 30. A decade later, matched at 21. Today, every eligible UK citizen over 18 has the right to vote for their representative in Parliament. I just want to say, guys, May the 7th, general election, you're eligible to vote. Please, please, please use your vote. People have argued for it and even died for your rights representation. I've been Dane. Thank you very much.